Happy New Year, you guys. If you saw recently, I posted sort of my review of my 2021 resolutions and goals and all of that kind of stuff. But today's video is dedicated to what I want to accomplish in 2022. I, every year, pick a kind of word. You guys probably heard of other people doing this. It's not like I invented anything new. Um, but it's kind of like a word that I carry with me, a word that I kind of meditate on, something I focus on, um, that, try, that I try to carry with me through the entire year. Um, this year's word is intention. Ooh. <laughs> and basically what I hope to accomplish with that word following me, with me all year long, is to do the things that I have made habits at this point, even new things that I have yet to try, um, all with a lot more intention, um, also known as purpose. Like if I am going to do a new project, whatever that is, I want to go into it with the right intentions, with getting out of it what saying what I want to get out of it right out of the gate. You know, if I make a new friend, being very intentional with them, even the relationships that I already have. Um, if I'm going to go hang out with somebody this weekend, I want to be super intentional about my time with them. I don't want to just spend the time complaining or venting. You know, I really want to try and use that time to get to know them better, to develop a deeper connection. You know, when it comes to my health and wellness, like if I'm going to go for a walk, I want to be intentional about that walk, not just like moseying on down the sidewalk or whatever it is, but I want to go into it thinking, okay, you know, I'm going to get my heart rate up or I am going to walk so many steps. I just want to be so much more intentional and purposeful with everything that I do. That obviously includes my relationship with you guys and this channel and everything that the Inside the Hem brand kind of has become. You know, last year I was able to launch so many new products for you guys that, that will really help you guys so faster and better and more efficiently. And, you know, that's what I always, always want to bring to this channel. So I'm thinking about, the, you know, the videos that I post and the type of content I post and being super intentional about that and making sure that it's not just a video for the sake of posting a video, but it's something super intentional that I think people will get something out of. So that's kind of the overarching theme of 2022 is intention. Um, if you want, leave your word. If you do like one of the word things, leave your word in the comment section below. I, I, someone told me recently that, oh, you are 62% more likely to be successful with your goal if you tell one person and then you're 80 something percent more likely to be successful if you tell four or more people. So, <coughs> Put it in the comments and you're already like 80 something percent of the way there with completing your goal, right? Is <laughs> That's not really what it means, but you'll be more successful if you tell more people about it, which makes sense because it's a little bit of like an accountability type of thing. Um, plus other people might get inspired by your word too. And um, you know, you might help some people kind of focus in on their year a little bit. So leave that in the comment section below. Um, my other sort of goals for 2022, and these are kind of a little bit repetitive, you know, I say them every year, but I think it's important to continue to say them out loud and continue to try and be the best sewist <laughs> that I can possibly be, right? Um, and the first one is to better align my sewing plans with the makes at the end of the month. So I go in, I I film and publish a video that talks about all my sewing plans. And you know me, I am not at a loss for ideas and inspiration. I got a ton of that. But when it comes to execution, I might fall a little bit flat. So what I'm trying to do is rein in the plans a little bit, rein in the ideas a little bit, and make sure I'm only planning things that I really genuinely believe I can execute. So eight things in a month, probably not going to happen. But one thing a week, maybe I could sew that, you know, so my plans are only going to be including four or five things instead of like 
every single idea that I possibly have come up with in the last few days. You know what I'm saying? So better aligning that. You guys will be able to help me uh, stay accountable with that because you see plans video and then you see a makes video. So you'll be able to tell me, Lindsay, you have a lot of plans. Are you sure you're going to be able to finish all of those? Um, the next one is my works in progress. This has been a resolution probably since I started sewing, but I can't help it. I am a work in progress aholic. I can't help myself. And it doesn't just come in the form of like projects that I bail on midway. It also comes in the form of my next resolution and that um has to do with like refashioning so i'll get something at goodwill know what i want to do with it bring it home it doesn't go in my closet because like it's not wearable the way that it is so it goes my work in progress um because it needs work oh, and so the work in progress gets very 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 large i was very good for about a month um, in clearing out a ton of works in progress, I was documenting the process on TikTok, which people seem to really resonate with. Um, some people were so inspired that they made their own version of my little work in progress bin. Basically, I put all my works in progress in a bin because I felt like I was going in to work on a work in progress project. And then I would see all the options I had and got totally overwhelmed by the decision making process. So I eliminated that and just put everything in a little bin and I draw out a little card and whatever's on the card is what I would have to work on for that day or week or whatever. And that really did help a lot. I started on and finished some projects that I would have pushed off because they were more challenging than I was ready for. Um, but so I need to start back up with that again and clear out all of my works in progress. You think that, oh, that's only going to take a couple of months. No, even if I did a project every single week, that still would not be enough. That's how bad it is, you guys. I have more than 52 projects, more than 52 unfinished projects. It's not not okay not okay so we're gonna do that we're gonna clear them all out but with that comes not adding more not adding more so no goodwill refashioning projects none i can't i can't no matter how inspired i am and how much i see something i'm like oh i could totally make that out of something from goodwill no cannot cannot do it also my little habit that i got into let's see if you guys can see all that back there whoop all that back there are sheets and blankets and different um fabric -y type of things that I got from Goodwill. My little bun is falling. Um because you know sheets at Goodwill are like two or three dollars a piece and I'm like oh this will make a good muslin or oh this would make a good insert whatever project it is. So now I've got all this fabric from Goodwill <sighs> and nothing's happening to it. So I need to stop buying sheets stop buying refashioning projects and deal with what I've got now before I can move on. So that's a big, big, big one. I know that I'm going to be at Goodwill wanting, but I have to remember a little bit like the Swedish death cleaning that I talked to you guys about where you clean your home in preparation of your death. It's a little morbid, but it's actually, it's got a great silver lining. Um, look it up if you haven't heard of Swedish death cleaning. Maybe this would be a little bit more like Swedish death not buying, you know, because it's the same idea. You bring it home and then if something happens, somebody else has to deal with that, you know, like no one's going to know what to do with 45 different sheets. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like they're just going to all go back to goodwill. Um, so I need to clear those out and also not add two. So that's kind of like two in one. Um, and then continue to work through my fabric stash. I have, I have re last year I killed it, um, because I only used stash fabric for the sew together challenge. So that was 12 different projects. Well, technically 11 different projects, um, where I used stash fabric. I don't think I don't think I broke the broke the habit. I think I stuck with it. So um, you can see wovens are a little bit heftier because I had more wovens and fewer woven projects for sew together. But my knits are looking pretty sparse and I'm very, very, very happy about that. So I wanna continue that. I wanna continue to shop for my stash whenever I can. Um, I have certain fabrics in there that I bought for specific projects 
trying to knock those out and really clear out the stash and get it to a place where I feel like um, I can buy new fabric again. I mean, I can't even really tell you the last time I bought fabric. Well, that's not true. That's not true. I go to Joanne a lot. So I need to stop doing that. Well, but do I shop my stash first and then when I can't find anything, then I go to Joanne? Maybe. I'll have to really, really think about that. Um, the Joanne sales are very enticing. I go in there for patterns and then I'm like, I can't think of a pattern that I have or a fabric that I have in my stash that would go with this pattern. Let me just peruse these little silky knits for a second. And then I have a cart full of fabric. So yeah, really, really, really trying to focus on shopping the stash first. It's unrealistic for me to only use the stash, but I can shop the stash first and foremost. And then if I don't have anything, again, that goes back to being intentional. When I go to Joanne, being intentional about my purchase. You know, I'm not going in here just to buy things that I like. I'm going in here to shop for this one specific project because I already shopped the stash and I know I don't have an appropriate fabric for it. Maybe that's like the mindset and how intention kind of plays a role in that. And then the last thing is, and I've been thinking about this a lot lately, is trying to sew for my personal style. And I know that seems so obvious, but my style is still evolving. So I feel like when I lived in Charleston five years ago, I was very much a fit and flare dress kind of girl. Pre-pandemic, in my early to mid thirties, um, I was going to an office, you know, I worked at an office, all of those kinds of things. My lifestyle at that time led me to a sort of dressier, girlier style. <coughs> but when I moved to uh, Charlotte, I quit my corporate job. I do YouTube full time. Then the pandemic hits and my style becomes like the pendulum just swung and it became very much athleisure, very much jeans and a sweater, um, very, very, very casual. And the more that I kept trying to dress myself, the more I found myself feeling like that wasn't it either. You know, that maybe the pendulum had swung too far. And so I think what my style for 2022 is turning out to be is something that's a little bit polished, a little bit tailored, but still leaning to the casual side. And I, I know I'm saying all these keywords and all these like buzzwords, but you guys don't really know what that means. It's really hard for me to explain, but I'm thinking like, you know, long line trousers with like, you know, a sweater with a French tuck. I'm thinking like, you know, flare jeans, wide leg jeans, maybe high waisted things. Um, even the way that I incorporate like jumpsuits and stuff like that. I think that I still will wear all of those things, but in a little bit more of a thoughtful, intentional, purposeful way. Um, instead of just throwing things on with a t-shirt, thinking about more streamlined and tailored ways to wear that garment. Does that make sense? Maybe not, but maybe you guys will just see it as I start to make things and wear things and style them for my Make It Monday videos. Maybe. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm focused on sewing for that. I also feel like whereas I used to really love a woven print fabric, which is why I have so many of them, I'm not entirely sure I'm still into that, which could be a problem for my stash because there are a lot of patterns in there. I just need to think about how to incorporate patterns. When you make a dress, obviously you have the whole outfit all in one thing um, and you don't have to think about matching. But whenever you stop wearing dresses and you use that same fabric to make a skirt or a top, now you have to think about what you're going to pair that with. So I'm not anti-pattern and print and color. I just am not only that. <laughs> I don't know if I even know what I'm saying, but 
you guys get the idea. I'm trying to focus a lot on my personal style. I'm turning 40 this year. So I, you know, I want to be a 40 year old who feels like I have a personal style, like a style that is mine. And maybe that's why it's hard for me to explain because it's not like I can just go on Pinterest and say, oh, I like that outfit and recreate it. I mean, yes, I could, but I want it to be mine. I don't want it to be like inspired by, you know, a certain blogger or celebrity or whatever it is. I want it to be what feels right for me. And that's just really hard to explain, right? Um, so those are my goals, resolutions, whatever you want to call them for 2022, specifically within the sewing room. Obviously, I have health and wellness goals. I have relationship goals with Dan. I have relationship goals with my friends. I have business goals for the channel and the Inside the Hem brand. I have, you know, all of those as well, but I didn't want to bore you guys with those. So I just <laughs> wanted to share with you what my sewing goals will be for this year. We'll come back at the beginning of 2023, God willing, and um, kind of evaluate what, like how I did. Hopefully I have no more works in progress. Hopefully uh, my plans better aligned with my makes. Um, I was not over shopping at Goodwill for refashioning fabric or sheets or any of that stuff. Um, using up a lot more of my stash. Here's the before. We should be able to see it be smaller at the end of the year. Um, and then really honing in on what my personal style is. Having outfits and clothes that when people see me coming, even if my, I have a mask on, they know that's, there goes Lindsay. <laughs> um, but let me know if you have any sewing goals um, for yourself for this year, any resolutions, or like I said before, let me know what your word for 2022 is. Leave them in the comments. I love reading them. I love starting conversations with you guys in there. So be intentional. <laughs> I'm going to be intentional when reading the comments. You see, see how it starts to blend in and start to make its way bleed into everything that you do. The words are helpful. So if you don't have one, maybe try and think of one and leave it in the comments. But that is going to do it for me today, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all very soon. Bye.